Hey friends, long time no see. Welcome to another episode of Vanessa Tries the Hard Stuff. Today we will be trying, attempting, being victorious over the opera cake. The reason I'm super excited about doing this cake is for two reasons. One, because it's super hard. Two, because I've never eaten it before. And three, because it's gonna be delicious. Now don't let the opera cake fool you. It is not just your average cake. I can do cake. The reason opera cake has been featured on the Great British Baking Show as a technical challenge, it's been on Zumbo's Just Desserts, is because of the super thin, perfect, perfect, perfect layers. And if you know me at all, you know that detail is not necessarily my strong suit. Exhibit A. So hold on to your seatbelt because this is gonna be quite the ride. So the first thing that we're going to be working on is the Joconde. And the Joconde is an almond sponge cake. We're going to need five ounces of ground almonds or almond flour and five ounces of powdered sugar. Now I'm just going to sift this through into this big giant bowl. Once that is all sifted in, we're going to be adding five room temperature. Oh. Oven's ready five eggs that are room temperature. Boom. We're just going to mix this. That looks fluffy and creamy to me. Now it says we're going to incorporate the flour, which is... So we put that bowl away and now we are going to be making the meringue that we first need five egg whites. We're going to keep the egg yolks because those are going to be used at a different part. Egg white goes into the bowl. Whoop. Egg yolk goes into another bowl. I'm also going to add a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to whip that up until it just starts to get foamy and then we'll add some sugar. Here we go. Now I'm going to add two tablespoons of sugar while it's mixing and then I'm just going to keep mixing until it forms stiff peaks. So I'm going to start it up, put the sugar in and then we're going to whip, whip, whip. All right, sugar's added. So now I'm just going to whip the crap out of it until it gets stiff peaks. Okay, looking pretty stiffy peaky to me. Do you remember how to tell if your meringue is where it should be? Oh, uh -uh. So once your egg wipes are all whipped, you're gonna add them to your mixture. Careful to incorporate it well, but not to knock all the air out of your egg whites. And then I'm going to add two tablespoons of melted butter. I'm gonna mix that in just the slightest bit I am going to split our batter into two pans and then we're going to bake it at 400 for eight to 10, eight to 10 minutes. So here we go. And this is going to go super thin. We're ready to go into the oven. Okay, so I was just about to go to step nine of preparing the coffee syrup, 
and I am completely stuck on number eight. When the cake is completely cooled, use an eight inch square ring to cut the sponge cakes into three. An eight inch square ring. I cannot possibly fathom what that could possibly mean. Okay. After a little bit of what I would like to refer to as a brain bleed over eight inch square ring, which doesn't even sound like it could possibly exist. And how do I cut two cakes into three? I do know that if I'm using nine by 13 pans, it technically will be nine by 26 pans. Cut the edges off, ipso facto, eight by 24. So you're doing eight inch by eight inch cake with three layers of cake in between. Whatever this website is, you could be a little bit more clear. Thanks. So it did end up going to 10 minutes, but we have cake. It's springy to the touch. While the cakes are cooling, we're gonna make the coffee syrup. Two third cups water. Half a cup sugar. One tablespoon instant coffee. Boil over medium heat. Wicked awesome. Do a quick slice across. See if I can get them to be a little bit more even and perfect. Get away, lumpy bumps. Get away. Much better. Succulent down. This is what I get for anchoring my phone upon the succulents. Kevin! Oh, Cutting off the edges. And I'm gonna start making my eight by eight little cakes. Let me do some math with my handy dandy dart stick. My three lovely skinny layers. It ended up being seven by seven, not eight by eight. It's fine. Prepare the chocolate croustillant. Melt the chocolate over a bain marie. Add paillette, fuentine, and stir to combine. I don't know what at least three of those words mean. This is the layer that is a little ganache, but has like a really good crunch. The paillette fuentine is a type of barky chocolate caramel sort of thing. All I know is that Walmart does not stock that. So what I got was Pepperidge Farms and Heath Candy. I don't know, it just sounded good to me. All right, so we need 70 grams of the Paillette Fouilletine. If you have any aggressions to get out, just get your meat mallet and just hit the crap out of cookies. Cool. Okay, so all that a Ben Marie is, is just a pot, where's my finger, pot of boiling water with a heat proof bowl over top of it. And then you can use that heat to then heat up your stuff. Once it gets all melty, then we're gonna add our cookie toffee, whatever, whatever. That is gonna get spread. Okay, it's all spread on. Now it goes into the fridge to cool down. Now it's time to make the chocolate ganache. Heavy cream, you put chocolate. In this case, it's semi-sweet chocolate. Then once this is at a boil, oh, steamy, sorry. And you let it sit for a minute. Then after that minute's over, 
You're just gonna stir it until it's totally melted. And there you go, beautiful ganache. Now we're gonna let this sit until it's room temperature. So next we are going to be making a buttercream and it is a buttercream that I have never made in my life. Remember those egg yolks we had before? Those are going in a mixer. Okay. Mix the egg yolks in a bowl until they're fluffy. I suppose it looks a little bit different. I don't know. We're gonna stop there. Do in a saucepan. Do three fourths cup of sugar, three tablespoons of water, and two teaspoons of instant coffee. And I'm going to cook this over medium heat. Okay, now that this is bubbling, I'm going to use my handy dandy candy <laughs> thermometer. I am going to be looking to see when it actually hits 240 degrees. And then we have to immediately take it off. In two. 40, stop! So now I'm adding it to my eggy mixture very, very, very slowly. We're just gonna keep mixing until it cools down. It's gonna be a while. Look how pretty. Okay, time for butter. A cup and one fourth of butter very gradually. And then once it's all in there, we're gonna kick it on high. Butter is incorporated. We're going into overdrive. Look at this. My God. I can't even believe it. We're done with all of our steps. Now, it's time to assemble. Remember that crostiante or whatever it was? Well, it's done cooling, so we are actually gonna put that face down on the plate. This is gonna be the bottom layer. Look at this. You can see my face in it. Put some of that coffee mixture, the coffee syrup, all over it. Amazing buttercream. Oh. We're going to add another layer of cake. Once again, I'm going to add my coffee syrup, that chocolate ganache. Looking pretty good. This is cake. And this last layer is going to be the buttercream again. The instructions made it very clear how important it is to get this as smooth as possible. And just to make sure I get it super smooth, I'm grabbing this guy. Shing! Like butter. So this guy is gonna go into the fridge for a couple hours. Okay, it's been two hours. Burr, 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 burr. Looks exactly the same, except hard as a rock. Bueno. Okay, the next step in the process is a messy one. I'm gonna be creating a glaze that I'm gonna pour over the cake, let it drip through, and then it'll be refrigerated again. So let's make the glaze. 200 grams of semi-sweet chocolate. We're doing the Ben Marie thing again. We're Okay, and then once it is melted, we're going to add canola oil. Two tablespoons. One, two. We're gonna mix. Okay, so after mixing, we have our glaze. 
which we will immediately be pouring onto our chilled cake. Buttercream. Oh no. Ah. Uh. Okay. I want you to see what's happening here. Oh, everything was going so well, but when I poured that really hot glaze on, it's kind of falling off and it's taking some of the buttercream with it. It's not totally ugly but it's also not what it should be so i'm gonna put it back in the fridge it's got to cool down for another hour and then we'll go from there all right you might notice that i'm wearing different clothes that's because it's like six hours later and now it's like 10 o'clock at night but i'm ready for the big reveal Okay, so all we need to do is get a hot knife and cut those sides. Got my hot knife. Here we go. Mm. Are you ready for this? We've done it. Look at the layers. Now it's time to fancify. Gold dust. My gorgeous, beautiful, finished product. Now all that's left is to taste it. Getting it all. Here we go. It was like the best thing I've ever had in my life. The crunchy bottom, super awesome. Heath was a really good choice. You can taste the coffee in the cake. That ridiculously buttery buttercream. It just is all perfect. I love it. So that was the opera cake. I'm so glad I made it. Was it complex? Yes. Was it time consuming? Yes. Was it really, really difficult? No. I think anybody could make that. And I would love to continue to perfect it. Loved it. Thank you so much for being a part of this gorgeous journey. And we'll see you next time.